Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 86 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Sports Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the not... <clears throat> I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous <clears throat> ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky, a.k.a. Gimpy. And with me, as always, is... Is Gimpy new? Yes. Ah, uh, excellent. Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And this is the Walking Wounded podcast that... <laughs> you're listening to today yeah, no shit. <laughs> um i won't go into the full story but basically i was holding my friend's son at a cab gown i tripped and in protecting him he is fine he's uh, just a baby i uh dislocated my elbow uh, i looked down at my arm and told my friend she had to call an ambulance which lucky for me in canada it didn't cost me a thing because the doctor believed i needed the ambulance and if not it would have cost me 45 dollars yeah. Um, and that was the only thing I would have had to pay. And that's the only thing I have paid. Or I haven't even paid that. I haven't had to pay that, but yeah. Last time I had to pay for a ambulance when I didn't have insurance, it was $900 and probably would have been more if it was even further of a distance they had to drive. Get the fuck out of here. Nope. That's a horror story in its own accord. So my elbow was dislocated for three hours. Um, and that's due to the fact that the ambulance had to get to me. I couldn't move. They had to stabilize me, get to me to the hospital. They had to take x-rays to make sure it wasn't fractured to see that I didn't need surgery. And then they <clears throat> popped it back in. Uh, but I was sedated, so it wasn't painful. And at that point I was in so much pain that I was just happy to have the bone back in place. Um, so it's funny Perfect. because yeah, it sucked. It sucked. I was, my hand was in a cast. Or I should say my arm was in a cast. It's out now, but I don't have feeling in my, uh, ring finger too much and definitely none in my pinky pinky still and half of my hand feels like it's asleep and as you were talking scotty i'm like oh man i wish i had something clever to say and i realized i'm like the guy from scary movie too take my good hand right <laughs> <Take> my good hand i'm like in that <laughs> in like the no. fucking butler outfit trying to hold on to edmund with my like arm anyway edmund's fine edmund the four-month baby sent me flowers today to uh, to thank me. Yes, and I don't know how he got a job at four months. I was months, just going to but... say, that's uh, amazing. Like, he was able to <laughs> buy you flowers and send them to you. Like, yeah. a four-month-old? That is impressive. I, it's pretty impressive. And, like, I guess he's just trying to follow the American concept of working young. You know, like... The... True. <laughs> that's what has to happen. There's no free ride. Um, so, yeah, so I'm busted i i got i had a cold but my hand is definitely very numb and the worst part is is my masturbation hand so oh that's no what yeah and like i don't i should just get batteries for my vibrator but i just haven't and i know everyone at friday nightmares like oh heather they feel me like all the ladies <laughs> like the five that listen are like <laughs> <laughs> erica and like I don't know. There's, your mom doesn't listen, right, Scott? Right, right, Scott? As far as I know. <laughs> your mom's like, oh, I think it's a vibrator. Maybe we should send her some batteries if she hasn't been able to get to the store. I'm sure but, if my mom listened, she would have commented on some of the things we have said. <laughs> I'm sure she would have by this point. But, uh, Scotty, you also are walking wounded. I am. So around the time that you hurt your elbow, I ended up getting a head cold. But, you know, nothing big. But it was just like, that's the start of all. Here's the start of... The shit, shit list of things that happened to me. Mm -hmm. So get a, got a head cold. Uh, my poor girlfriend, Erica, had really bad uh, poison ivy. Oh, it lasted damn. for quite some time, and she was fighting it, fighting it. Finally, she's cleared up. I'm past the cold for the most part. And so all that mess was going on. Then I went to go buy beer one night last week and went to go grab my license. Realized my license is missing. So I'm like, where the fuck would my license be? It would have been in the wallet. I never take my license out. Then I remembered I had to use the license to show for my anxiety medication. And the company put it in the bag with the prescription and didn't hand it right back to me. They put it in the bag. 
Well, I had about an hour before I got home because I had a couple of things to do. So when I got home, I opened the bag, took prescriptions out, threw my license away. And by the time I remember this week or so has gone by, so it, it's gone. So while that's like, I was stressing about that. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I get on my computer, realize, oh, my keyboard stopped working. So right now I'm using my computer. Don't have a keyboard. So thankfully Skype is easy to use without a keyboard. But so I was like, well, fucking hell. All right. So I'll just sign it online. Signed it online. And then I'm like, all right, well, I got to call my mom because there's a piece of information I need that I do not have on me because it was on my license. All right. Well, I'll wait for her. I'm going to take a shower. Start taking a shower. Mom calls. I'm like, well, it's important. So I got out real fast, answered, got the information I needed. I'm like, all right, I'll jump back in the shower. Go to get back in the shower. And I slip and fall in the tub. Mm. and smash my ankle and my an- my left ankle is now bruised was swollen for a bit and i was limping for a couple of days and then not only that but that same leg this wasn't because of me slipping in the tub but my knee has been grinding a bit where it feels like it's about to give out on me so now i'm wearing a knee brace it's so grinding I- like some kids from the 2000s at a, t- at a party huh <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Like Nelly's yeah. playing in the background. <laughs> but Jesus Christ, like all these things right after that, like, are you fucking kidding me? It was like all, all this happened in one day. Like, hear me out, Scott. You know how our good friend Tim Davis at the Dummies of Horror podcast was very sick and he's doing much yes. better now. Which I'm so happy that he is. Hashtag blessed. What if this is like a final destination of podcasters? Hear me out. Oh, First God. they got Tim. Then it came for me. Then it came for you. It's like old people injuries. Next it's coming up for Rob. And Rob's <laughs> the oldest and the brittlest out of all of us. That's so true. Rob that's not careful. looking too good, Rob. Be careful, Rob. Don't hold any babies. Don't shower. Baths only. Don't go near any. Well, even though the poison ivy was Erica still, you know, she's kind of related to you. So maybe like pain traveled on to her maybe we're the new final destination six it very well could be <laughs> everybody watch out anybody that's a podcaster listen, take cover get out get out wrap yourself in bubble wrap honestly but uh slow recoveries for both scott and i hopefully i get the feeling back in my masturbation hand um it'll be nice it would be honestly like i learned how much i could do with my left hand but i got pretty depressed so depressed that I thought a movie on Netflix was really great and then repeated to Scott later that I really loved it. And I think I use the word love because I'm just so sad right now that I try to love anything. Like, the gaslighting is real. Um, Lance, Lance Lanford from the Horror Return podcast also commented about him being gaslit. And I said, I'm too far gone, Lance. Like, I'm not the person you go to for help. Scott has <laughs> Scott has made it very clear that 2023 has broken me. Um, but I just choose joy because if not, I just choose to be in pain. But let me tell you, body horror, we've had dislocated elbows. We've had someone with poison ivy. We've also had your ankle and your knee. Scott, we are a fucking anthology. (laughs) David David Cronenberg, you can stop rolling anytime now. Honestly, this is going to be our anthology, old people hurting themselves, <laughs> middle-aged fuckers doing things that are normal, like walking across parking lots with babies, showering, gardening, and just hurting themselves. Um, yep. I realized I called Erica old, but I'm sorry, Erica, you're in here with us. You're in your fucking 40s. Here we are together. We're all just broken. Um, oh, not as so bad true. as Rob, though. Rob's like the grandpa, so it must be coming hard for Rob Humphreys, so... Be careful, Rob. Oh, it's coming um, hard, all right. <laughs> it's <was> coming. <laughs> but we managed to watch some movies. We have. Yeah, I'll say I got I watched five in the last two weeks, so not bad. Not bad, not bad. You know, not never be at twenty twenty numbers again. But uh, you know, we're we're here and we're doing our best. You know, we're putting our best foot forward. And I forgot this movie last time, but uh, I have remembered it this time. I don't think you watched it, though. Did you, Scotty? Uh, the see. Communion Girl? No, I did not, because you told On me. On the study? So. Yeah. All right, so let's get into it. The Communion Girl, May 1987. So we got the month and the year, May 1987. When Scott and I were young and weren't injured, <laughs> we're just existing. Memory. <laughs> Well, returning from a nightclub after having taken drugs, <laughs> a new girl in town, Sarah, and her friend, Rabi, find a doll wearing a communion dress. From that moment, their lives will become a living hell. 
This movie is sitting at a 103 minute runtime, and this is the most basic bitch ghost story you can find. Um, when you think of me, you think of someone who likes White Claws. Uh, September 1st, tomorrow, we're recording this on August 31st, so I will start switching over to some pumpkin spice latte. Oh, of course you will. Uh, wearing my fucking scarves. Um, you know, talking about, I don't know, what other things do white bitches do? I fuck dudes. Um, Bonfires. Bonfire. Oh, yeah. I always do. Oh, fuck yeah. I do all that shit. Fuck yeah. Um, anyway, <clears throat> this is the basic white bitch ghost movie. That's also Spanish. Um, there's very, very good Spanish ghost films out there. Actually, some of the best ghost films out there are Spanish. Thinking Terrified. True. Excellent fucking and film. The Orphan. This is, the Orphan. This is not or an the ex- Orphanage or whatever it was. Or the Orphanage. Yeah, The Orphanage. Um, this, not. Uh, Matt Woods gave it two and a half stars. I think that's fair. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's the worst movie I've ever seen, but did I think it was like... Oh my God, I'm so glad I watched this. Not really. I, I was able to get through it. It had an, a good enough plot line. It was easy to follow. You know, we I try to watch all the Shutter movies, so I'm glad I watched this one. And the ending's dark, but <clears throat> do I think this is a ghost movie that really stands the test of time and that people are going to be talking about? Nope. Do I think this is going to go to pasture? Yep. <laughs> So if for some reason you are a ghost movie completist or you really like Spanish films, check it out. With the catalyst that there are better better Spanish films out there. This is available on AMC, Shutter, all the Shutties. Um, I don't know. If you have Shutter and you're watching all the Shutter, you know, releases that come out this year, sure, check it out. Rob Humphrey sitting there, ain't that 2022? Fuck off, Rob. Don't trip in the shower. Oh, so, Rob, uh, oh, I love you. All right, Rob, wet dreams. I like how he calls the most recent AEW preview, pay-per-view coming up wet dreams. Or yeah, whatever. Wrestle Dream is now wet dream. <laughs> wet dream. Makes we me wish laugh. it was a wet dream. Oh, man. Nah, me too. Anyway, um, yeah, it's on Shutter if you want to watch it. 103 minute runtime, The Communion Girl, but better Spanish films out there. Yeah, and I was saying, speaking of Shutter, you uh, got another one up here that I have oh, also avoided to watch. <laughs> look at me. I'm just... You know, I'm a real role model here on Friday Nightmares. Or you're just gaslit by Shudder, because Shudder is just gaslighting all of us right now. Look, some of us have to do work, Scott, okay? Like, not all of us get to sit there in our privileged little horror basement with all our little gremlin stuff beside us. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Like the king. (laughs) I know, like the king that you are. (laughs) I mean, I mean. I know. And I mean, behind me, you know, just honestly, like it, when you're that cool, like, how can you be denied? Like, let's just look at reality here. Right. No one can like, deny how is, cool I am. No, no one can. It's just the, it's just fucking facts. It's just fucking facts. You know what else is facts? This looked like a shitty Canadian Indian film, but it wasn't. It was made in America. Also <laughs> shitty. So this is called Bad Things like this movie. It's a uh, it's a torturous 83 minute runtime. Um. The horror is driving them crazy. A weekend getaway for a few friends at a snowy hotel becomes a psychological tailspin and a bloody nightmare. All right, I'm going to I'm going to level with this movie. There were some things that this movie did well. Um for a low budget movie, the filming was great. Lance Lanford brought that up on a on a post again from The Horror Returns and yes, absolutely the filming in this movie for low budget was done well. The acting isn't horrible from some of the characters. The problem is, is the story is boring and confusing as fuck. You really don't know what's going on. And honestly, I got fucking 15 minutes into this movie and I'm like, oh my God, what kind of fucking Canadian indie film bullshit is this? Because it was (laughs) snowy. It looked like some ghetto hotel that we have up in like fucking North Ontario that was like, looked like it should have been shut down years ago. And I'm like, okay, like it. So I looked it up, right? I always like to look it up, and I'm like, oh man, I'll talk about where this was. It's probably filmed out in like fucking Halliburton or something like that. And I'm like, American? This shit's American? Fuck <laughs> because yeah. it screamed Canadian. Like I was like, this has to be a Canadian film funded by the CBC. So for anybody who's from Canada, you know what that means. If you know, you know. Hmm. So it, it, like, but it wasn't. It was some fucking americans that got together to make this shit and surprisingly enough it's been picked up by a lot of networks you can find this on amc plus all the shutters um and amc plus amazon my god it's like every fucking streaming service is in bed with each other and all just fucking each other and coming together anyway 
So Dave Bailey gave this two and a half stars. Matt Wood gave this two stars. And I'm kind of sitting right there with Matt Wood at a two star. Look at that, Matt. Look wow. At together. See, I, Matt? Friends, finally. The stars have aligned. Right? And it's like Matt and I skipping hand in hand, like, judging films <laughs> together. Honestly, I was very disappointed in this film. I I appreciate that Shudder picks up some of these films because it's clearly an indie film. Clearly had love put into it. You know, I, I give the film... I give the director and the writer and the crew credit for working with what they had and the actors and actresses, but it just really wasn't a great film. And I really have a hard time recommending it. If you are a a Shudder completist like me and trying to watch all the things that drop on Shudder, yes, check it out. Otherwise, I would say skip this one. You're not going to lose any sleep over it. Unless, I don't know, low budget kind of psychological horror is your thing. But when Mr. Dave Bailey gives it two and a half stars... I think that tells you all you need to know. That is that, average at best. When he gives the two and a half stars and Brandon Orlick, fr- previously from the Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, says it's the worst film he's seen this year, that's saying something. Like, I feel like that's, yeah, that sums it all up completely. So, unfortunately, Shudder took a little bit of a slowdown. But, you know what? Let's give them hope. Halloween is coming up soon. We are, Scott, did you know today is August 31st? Oh, oh, tomorrow, 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 spoopy season. <laughs> <laughs> he's exploding like that exploding heads from scanners um <laughs> only it's like a pumpkin and it's pumpkin guts all over the pumpkin place Pumpkin season guts <laughs> i um yeah so two months from today scott mm. it's halloween i'm not sure if you know that two months from today is halloween heather for me <laughs> every day I am Halloween. <laughs> Just call me Pumpkin Scott Crawford. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to rewatch uh, Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends because Halloween Ends is just such a masterpiece to the Halloween franchise. I mean, I mean it, it it is definitely the better of the trilogy, Tim Davis. Oh, it's so Tim good. Davis. Like, Halloween you know Ends I mean? is the best of that trilogy. It is. It is. <laughs> like when I watch Halloween Ends, I'm just like, oh my God, what a unique, what a unique movie, Scott. Like why, you know, I had already learned before that evil dies tonight and that no one in Hattonfield can tell the difference in height, size, weight, hair color or anything like that. They all think Michael Myers is someone who's five foot as opposed to six foot. Um, I learned that karaoke and, and sob nights at bars are the way to handle your grief. Beat downs with hockey sticks and irons are where it's at. Damn straight. Um, damn straight. And then, you know, why would I want to see Lori and Michael fight where I can see some kid who's babysitting <laughs> accidentally murders a mother kid? And, you know, I'm like, oh, movie just built around how this town sucks. You know what I've learned from those three Halloween movies? Haddonfield's a horrible place to live. That's what I learned from it, those three Halloween movies. You know what movies. I learned from those Halloween movies? And majority what? of the Halloween franchise is you need to stop making Halloween movies. <laughs> Probably should have stopped at part three. You know, I think we should do a watch party and invite Tim Davis, Alan Chacha. Um, you know what? We're going to throw Cha-Cha. in. Who else are we going to throw in? Who else hates Halloween ends? Who Almost else everybody. is really angry? Everybody. We're going to invite Lemoy, Neil Lemoy. Yes, Nudie. We're going to invite everyone and we're going to do a watch party. And Scott and I are going to talk about how brilliant it is. Like half of you are like, Scott, isn't this just such a great character development on it's how so Corey... Like, it's just so clever, and it's just, it's really taking the Halloween franchise and taking it in a new direction, and then we'll see true exploding pumpkin heads everywhere. Yes, including my pumpkin head. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's, like, Eric's like, yes, honey, it's <laughs> so exploding. Oh, no, look at all those mm. seeds everywhere. Oh. Ooh, you're a big boy, good boy. <laughs> Like good boy. So they go, give your ass over here. So you're like, yes, yes. master. <laughs> right away. Right away, my love. <laughs> We're talking real big for two people that are super injured. We are going to get beat down by those townspeople. It's all going to be podcasters beating you and I as we're making smart ass comments see, the, about the, well, that's, the Halloween franchise. <laughs> see, that's the problem, though, is how do you... How do you beat up someone that enjoys being beaten? I mean, I am a masochist, so I'm just going to be like, oh, hit me harder. Yes. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, my God. Like Tim's beating his down with, like, his DVDs of Jaws. And he's like. And I'm, and I'm just, I'm laying flat on the ground on my 
uh, face down on the ground, but yet I'm somehow still rising, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, hit me harder. This is what they think we're all dead. Like, I don't know. And then someone throws maple syrup on me just for, like, fucking shits and giggles. And, like, die, Canadian, die. And we, like, rise up. It'd be great. Not only are we making the new Final Destination 6, we're also bringing back the Halloween franchise. Only it's going to be Scott and I torturing other horror fans about how great Halloween ends is. This sounds Uh, fun. I feel like we just found our next hobby for the next two months, Scott. Fuck yeah, we're going to do a commentary with everybody. Okay, so we're in a chat group with Tim. He's going to listen to this and... I hope we remember to do this. I think we should start going in there and just dropping how much we're, we can't wait to rewatch Halloween Ends. Okay, and, like, we should is... get Robin on it, too, and the, and the three of us just, like, say the stupidest shit about Halloween Ends. I mean, that is literally what I'm watching. September 1st all the way to October 1st. For 31st is what, Halloween, Halloween Ends, Ends over and over and over. over, and over. over. <laughs> that's, gonna be, that's all I'm watching. The nuances of that movie, I'm going to dig deep because... There, it's just so good, and there's so much meaning behind it. Oh, it's just so deep, you know? I just really like it when a Halloween franchise that's just based on a simple fucking slasher that was just, like, supposed to be one movie has moved into this, like, whole fucking other realm that is so out there. Oh, man, Tim's so mad. Now he's like, so mad at fucking He probably turned off our show at this point. You know what, Tim? We don't really love Halloween ends that much. What we do love is you, and we're super glad that you yeah, did. I still like Halloween ends. Oh, I thought it was okay. I don't think I... I wouldn't say I loved it. I, was, I wouldn't love it, but I, love it. seven and I was a half. fine with it. Yeah, seven like, I thought half, it was entertaining, honestly. But then again, I'm not the biggest Halloween, like... Yeah, like I said, franchise right? should have died after part three. Yeah, like, I was like... I like four and five, but they're not great. They're not. They're cheesy as fuck, so... Cheesy. You know... Especially if Donald Pleasant's like fucking freaking out at like, <laughs> what's your name, the... Jamie? He's like fucking losing his mind on this like eight year old. <laughs> and then in part, and then in part five, the derpy cops with the music, the bonk, bar dum, bar dum. Anytime the cops show up, it's like, why? Why are we doing this? Why is this <laughs> so thing? Funny. Fucking kill me. Fucking so funny. Anyway, I guess we should get back to 2023 movies. But just so everyone knows, we're recording this on the 31st, and that means a two month Halloween. It's spooky <laughs> season. <laughs> Except for Scott and I, because we're Halloween fucking 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on a motherfucking leap year. Starting tomorrow night after work, I'm cracking open a bottle of apple pie wine, and I'm going to start fucking my pumpkin. (laughs) It's spooky season, bitches. Should should I leave? (laughs) Nah, watch, baby, watch. Anyway, uh, this is a good lead up to that comment. Uh, maybe you could ask her this as well in this kind of phrase. <laughs> this movie. You watched this one, right? <laughs> yes, I did. So I'll, I'll right. bring this one in. So the movie we're talking about is Mother May I? Uh, you only get one mother. Uh, Emmett enters into a nightmarish game of therapy with his wife, Anya, who has inexplicably taken on the persona of his estranged and recently deceased mother. It's got a runtime of 99 minutes. Um, so uh, Brandon Orlick brought this one up because uh, someone, I think it was Dave Z, said that this is definitely a, a Brandon film. He hadn't watched it yet, but I was like, well, I see it's on Plex, so I'll give it a watch. And yeah, I found it to be very, uh, very interesting. The characters, <clears throat> they do really, like they have great chemistry together. The story of this had me very intrigued to the point where i'm just wanting to know what the hell is going on like is this real or what's is he just kind of delusional from losing his mother or what's going on with everything that's happening and it gets revealed at the end and yeah i like the way it played out like i thought like it was all around like a just very fascinating movie i wouldn't say it's like greatest movie of the year or anything but i still found it very fascinating and i was like glued to the screen when i was watching it Yeah, I thought it was really well done. I think this is, again, a good example of indie horror done right. You know, it kept it to a simple setting. The actors were able to carry this movie. And that's so important when you have a small cast. You need to have actors that can carry it. And the husband and the wife, or I think they're married, or their fiancés, they're or their boyfriend girlfriend, and boyfriend, boyfriend, I think. boyfriend. Yeah, like it was a oh, great it is, balance. It, it's his wife, at least it's from his the wife. Um, they really, really balanced off each other good, and I and I good. It was good. It was, and good. It was good balance. And I just I thought that at a ninety nine minute runtime, it was the perfect length. I think it knew better than to go too long. 
Um, I think this would be a great film for people that like relationship horror and relationship development and, and all that kind of stuff. I think this oh, is definitely. right up that alley. Uh, I can see you gave it a three and a half. Dave Bailey gave it four stars. I'm probably somewhere around you with three and a half to four. I think it's a quality yeah, film. It's right in between that for me. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think it should be enjoyed by people. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah, I have a few people. Uh, I'm not sure the screen. I'm not sure of them by their screen name. But yeah, a couple people gave it three out of five. A couple people gave it four out of five. So yeah, it's pretty well liked, uh, and it's available on Apple TV, Vudu, Google Play, Amazon Video, and YouTube. And it's worth if if what you are into is what we described, it's worth a rental. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Like I found this one to be very. Definitely a very fascinating movie and one that might get an award or so from me for certain things. Did you watch this one? Yes. Okay, good. Because I think you need to lead on this because I'm pulling some blanks. All right. So the next movie we're going to talk about is called Metamorphosis. Uh, 82-minute runtime. The synopsis is seeking refuge on an island in upstate New York. A married couple's final attempt to salvage their failing relationship takes a turn for the worse when the husband begins to regress emotionally, mentally, and physically. Uh, so yeah, this is another relationship-based horror film. Um, however, like this one was one of the first ones I watched after we recorded last, so it's a little foggy in my head. This is but, where they're on the island. Now I'm, it's coming back to me. They've gone yeah. there to fix their marriage. There's a lot of angriness. And the husband gets fucking weird, right? Yes, and uh, Got it. this is one where I'm looking at this couple going... Y'all should not be trying to fix this marriage. Y'all should just end this because y'all are terrible to each other. You're fucking awful hun- to each other. Did this not remind you of that honeymoon movie that we watched? Oh, that one's a lot better where the couple goes yeah, I'll up say, to the cottage. Yeah, honeymoon is a million times better, but yeah, yeah like, something along but those it's like lines. But it's like they watch that movie and they're like, oh, we should do something similar, but they – or keep, what keeps you alive. Yeah. Also a lot better. Like, <laughs> like, I feel like they just watch those and they're like, let's rip off the same concept but not do it as well. Right. Basically, it, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, the, the characters that they're the actors in this just really didn't have the greatest chemistry. I mean, like, obviously, yes, they were supposed to be a like, fighting, arguing couple, but it just seemed a bit off to me. And but yeah, this one's as you can tell, if it's only been less than two weeks since I watched it and it's already foggy in my head, that's saying this is definitely not a memorable film. And it dragged for an 82 minute runtime. It fucking dragged. Yeah. Like that's not good. When you have 82 minutes, it should be quick. Exactly. It shouldn't feel like it's dragging. This shit felt like I got halfway through and I'm like, get the fuck on with this shit already. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I was over it. Um, but yeah, I stuck with it. But yeah, I gave it like a two and a half to three out, uh, out of five on Letterboxd because mm. I was like, mm. it's better than average, but that's still nothing mem- memorable enough to like recommend to anybody. It is on Tubi for free if anybody is interested in watching it. That's a big if. Yeah. Um, next one is me. Happy birthday. Payback is... Oh, thanks. <laughs> a young student comes to grips with her gruesome past when her college friends take her to a haunted house on the edge of town. The co-eds find themselves at the wrong place at the wrong time as an escape killer is holed up in the house. You know, it takes a lot of guts to make a film. And sometimes you just have to start somewhere. And this was starting somewhere. This is true indie filmmaking. And I applaud the effort, but I do not necessarily think this is something that anyone should go watch. That is a that listens to our podcast, unless you are a true indie fan, like Jason Gray would probably appreciate this. Um, How about Jason Gray's water, possibly Xander, because I, and, and maybe even Phil Ray or Craig Wooten, maybe because I think that they, but I, with the catalyst of going into this, I think Jason the most, because Jason, Jason's I, I think is the most open-minded when it comes to films. Like he, he will watch a lot of low budget films and talk about them. And we'll look for the kind of the good parts of them. But this is truly low budget. Like this is truly like camcorder level low budget. Right. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. It's on Tubi. If you're interested in making a film one day and you're curious to what it could look like, the idea of a slasher, it's not a bad film to watch for that perspective of it. But like, this isn't a great movie. Like, Matt Wood, please don't watch this movie and then message me and tell me that I'm on drugs because (laughs) I, I recommended it. I'm not recommending it, Matt. Go back and have your beers. Do not watch this movie. Matt, she said um, she loved it. Yeah, he he. I recommended something, and he went and watched it, and he asked me if I was high when I watched the movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> said, I wish I was high. Fuck. You give me more credit, Matt, than I actually deserve. 
Um, but yeah, so I would say only if you really are into true, true, true indie films, maybe you're an indie filmmaker, you want to make an indie film, watch this one. If not, skip over it. Happy birthday. 87 minute runtime. Available on Tubi for free. Yeah, this one sounds like a skip to me. Oh, yeah, that's why I didn't tell you to watch it. Yeah, good to know. But there is one that you did tell me to watch. And, oh, come on. Ooh. This was fun. Don't be a dick. This was fun. No, I'm I, like, I, I'm just let me let me see my piece. You know, no, you were mean to me earlier. I'm broken. I was not mean. I, broken. All right. So the movie we're talking about is a Netflix uh, original or is it just uh, picked up by know. Netflix? I, I don't know. It just looks like a, I think it's a just sp- random Spanish horror film they picked up. You know, Nettie. Yeah. You uh, know, Nettie. <laughs> this one is called Killer Book Club. Uh, it's uh, 2023, obviously, with a runtime of 89 minutes. Eight horror-loving friends fight for their lives when a killer clown who seems to know the grim secret they share begins to pick them off one by one. Um. So, yeah, Heather was like, this is the movie we are kind of highlighting earlier where she said she, she told me she loved it. And she was so gaslit by this that she's like, well, I told you I didn't love it. I'm like, no, you literally just told me an hour ago you loved it. And I screenshotted the right. conversation and circled it and sent it back me. to her. <laughs> when I say love, I mean, like, for what it is. And I'm going to read a review from Horror. Oh, he still has Horror for Dummies on here. Tim, you better change that. Uh, anyway, Dummies of Horror. Tim Davis. Okay, so this is a complete ripoff of Scream, and I know what you did last summer. But I enjoyed it for what it is. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Maybe I was in the mood for a whodunit slasher and to scratch that itch. The kills in this are pretty decent, which I agree. Yeah. And nothing is crazy, but you do get some nice gore. The killer costumes could have been better, but I can forgive that for the film. It's not a must-watch, but I enjoyed it. I agree. I I think for... I was watching this before I went to get my cast removed, and I was a pretty depressed Heather last week. I was pretty mopey-mope and not happy and hated my life and thought I was never going to... I still can't feel my hand fully, so, you know, things... I was a sad panda. And I put this on because I was like... And it was simple for my little Heather brain... It is very much a paint by number slasher, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun as fuck. Maybe it's because I forever loved screaming. I know he did last summer. I don't know. Maybe I still wish I was 16 years old, getting drunk in basements and watching those movies. I don't know, but I loved it in the sense that it was entertaining. It was fluffy. It was easy to watch. And if you have Netflix and you like slashers, watch this movie. It's a yeah. fun fucking movie. Because I will, like, I will say it was easy to watch. It was fun enough, but dear God, I don't know how they didn't get sued for how blatantly they ripped off Scream. Like they, oh, like, with the mask, are, with like some well, of the scenes in it. Almost yeah. all the like majority of the scenes were identical, and the way they were talking about things is like instead of talking about horror movies, talk about horror books. It was the exact same. It actually, you know what it reminded me of—a Fear Street novel. It did feel like that too, especially with the. Uh, it's a twist at the end. Yeah, that was much of a twist. so well. <laughs> you know, it I was who very was. much a, a Freer Street novelish. You knew who the killer was. Yeah, at least one of them. But oh. how? Oh, but they were one of them was indisposed when some killing was happening. Did you just figure there were two? I yeah, I assumed there was two because I'm like, it's ripping scream off. There's got to be. So why didn't that one killer kill the other one, the other person? It didn't rip you it know, off. Like yeah, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, it didn't, didn't go that far. But I'm not, I'm surprised it didn't go that far. Yeah, you know, but you know what I mean. The scene where it's in the medical building and the two yes. other characters are busy. Why didn't Why didn't the second killer kill? Frosted tips, blonde hair. It's a good question. Yeah, like, I didn't get that part. Why didn't they explain that? I was like, was that just to give a rare ha- red herring? Pro- probably. Right? Um, but, honestly, uh, yeah, compared I'll, I'll to the Communion sure. Girl, this is a better fucking film, let me assure you. It's way more saying, Yeah, like, like I said, I didn't hate my time with it, but I was giving you shit about it just because... Uh, last recording, I was talking so highly about Cobweb, and you're going, yeah, Cobweb was all right, but we've seen this a million times before, and I'm going, all right, but you're telling me this movie is literally Scream. Dude, it's this literally is, Scream. Okay, but every slasher has the same fucking principles. But still, like, I, I just, I just, I see that, and I'm going, all right, Heather, we're going to have a discussion about but, that. But, okay, but Cobwebs <laughs> is supposed to be something deep and more interesting and different. It was like it was. antlers, repeat of 
No, it wasn't. Like it was like it was like fucking antlers. I could have watched antlers from last year and watched cobwebs and been like, ah, shit, it's the same thing. What do you know? Oh. Yes. Like, at least with Killer Book Club, it's not trying to pretend it's original. Like, it's not like, oh, look at us reinventing the slasher genre. They they make digs throughout the entire thing. They have that whole conversation about something at the end, which is a complete dig at the movie. But, I mean, Cobweb never said it was going to be anything spectacular but, either. But a movie like that that is made like that is setting a different expectation than a movie ah, that's made. Ah, you're making excuses. You're gaslit. You're making <laughs> and you know what's the worst? narcissist thing is is that the movie that did kid horror in a house best is one that few people talk about it came out during the pandemic and it was fucking come play and a lot of people don't oh, talk, about talk about that one. do they i have never well, did they talk about it back when it came out yes. yeah it but was on a lot of people's that time that was movie was a fucking mwah, chef's kiss yeah, but I like, like that it's awesome um, but no, I, I still like this. I, you haven't seen my rating on Letterboxd because I haven't had a chance to rate it yet, but mm-hmm. it would be about a three out of five. Yeah, that's why I would give it. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it was entertaining, but at the same time, I'm just like, oh, Heather. Okay, Heather. You said you loved this. I you did. I loved, it for, loved, what it, I loved it for what it was. I loved it for what oh, it see, was. See, now you're going back. You're like, I did say it. But when I said it that you loved it, you're like, I didn't but, say I loved it. I thought you were talking about the day that I had my cast off. And I was like, I wasn't really fully with it that day. I was like, I don't know. I was super I know, emo. I, I should have dyed my hair, my hair black last week, dude. I was like super depressed. I just, find it funny I, cause, like, I just find it funny because you said you loved the film. Then 40 minutes later, you go, I didn't say I loved it. I'm like, no, you literally, literally just said it 40 minutes before that. I I had <laughs> no memory. Remember. No, I swear to God, up and down to you, I totally didn't. <laughs> oh, that that tells, could... Well, we also know something else that happened today that probably threw me off a little bit. So that probably had oh, a yeah. little bit <laughs> to deal with it as well i had a visitor from the past today that i was not expecting like i don't know like a fucking ghost so i would have preferred a ghost i would have preferred a poltergeist than this person fucking showing up but i would have for Corey from halloween showing up over this fucking individual so scott's right this is actually my number one movie it of is. the year she said, she, loved it. <laughs> she said she loved it folks Killer Matt Wood. Like how, Matt Matt Wood. Wood. I loved, loved it. it. I, I love it so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Blu-ray and then I'm going to fly to Spain and I'm going to get everyone to sign it. That's how much I love it. That's what I'm going to do when I go to the UK is I'm going to take an extra trip over to Spain just so I can get this Blu-ray sign. And I'm going to buy a copy of The Mask and I'm going to go out as Halloween as that killer and no one's going to know who I am. It's going to be great. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'd be like, which slasher are you? I'm like, have you seen Killer Buck Club? They'll be like, that movie sucks. I'm like, I like it. <laughs> I love it. It's my number one. Tw- Me and Rob Humphreys. I get you now, Rob. I understand. You know, Quicksand's your number one, and we bullied you, and now I'm being bullied for Killer. I'm almost tempted to put Killer Book Club as my number one movie of the year. Well, I it's, think either, I it's either that or Bury the Bride. Oh, man. Like, honestly... Or, or quicksand, because, I mean, you did love that, too, apparently. In all fairness, <laughs> Bury the Bride may be in my top ten. Oh, Lord. Yeah, suck my cock if you don't like it. I don't care. You liked this next one, which was fucking... <laughs> what was that? You liked, this, you liked this next one, yeah. which was not good. It was. It was... Not as it though was... it was horrible. I watched this with George, and he's like, when is this fucking movie going to end, Okay. It like, was, it, he thought it was stupid. It was exactly what it presented itself to be. Like, the trailer... Yeah, garbage. Nope, just ridiculous, dumb, stupid blockbuster with a giant shark. And this multiple. is where... Okay. I didn't lo- it All right, so we are talking the Meg... Or oh, yeah, Meg- Killer Book Club is on Netflix for everybody yes. if you want to watch it. Sorry. <laughs> but we are talking Meg 2, The Trench. Runtime of 116 minutes. Tagline, back for seconds. Uh... Synopsis, an exploratory dive into the deepest depths of the ocean of a daring research team spirals into chaos when a malevolent mining operation threatens their mission and forces them into a high-stakes battle for survival. So, Heather seems to think I love this movie. I don't love it, but I watched the trailer, and when you're seeing a trailer with freaking Jason Statham running up on a jet ski with a harpoon in hand, flying midair... Getting ready to attack a giant shark, 
and you see squid tentacles and you see dinosaurs and you see all this stupid shit in this trailer you look at it and go okay this movie does not take it itself seriously this is gonna be a dumb movie with sharks and other big creatures and yeah that's what it was it was dumb the acting was ridiculous and it had just giant sharks and giant octopus it was exactly what i expected i just turned my brain off and enjoyed it it wasn't great but it was entertaining Oh, you're right. It wasn't great. Um, I want to know how much money Jason Statham made on this film. Um, and I want to know why Ben Wheatley directed it. <laughs> that's, that's the part that shocked me is like, this did not feel like a Ben Wheatley film. At how, all. how, how, how much money did they pay Ben Wheatley? Probably a lot. Cause he's an indie director. So they probably just said, Hey, we'll give you like 40 million. And he'd be like, I bet. <laughs> like, like someone that has created some excellent films, and then this. I mean, to be fair, he just directed it, so it's not like he wrote the but, story but, or anything. But, 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 no, why? Who? Big what? dumb summer fun. Is what like, this and was. why? Okay, this is a spoiler. Luckily, like everyone fucking on here has watched it. Like Matt's watched it. Fucking Day Sanders watched it. Tim's watched it. Brian's watched it from the horror, um, horror returns. Rob Humphreys gave it two stars. Yeah, Rob, that's accurate. Um, Kate Pollux watched it. Okay. Why did they go back to the trench? Why are they continuing to study Megs? Why are you asking why in a dumb movie like this? <sighs> they literally show in the trailer, Heather. We watched the trailer with Brandon and we're like, this looks dumb and fun. This is why you turn your brain off. Like, I knew right off the bat. I'm like, I got to turn my brain off because okay. this is going to be dumb. Matt Wood? Three, three stars. I thought... I thought the CGI sharks and other creatures were decent. For an asylum film? What film were you watching, Matt? Because this was some of the worst CGI I have seen in a main budget film. 65 million years had better fucking CGI. And that just had Adam Driver and some little chick running around, like little girl running around for fucking an hour and a half. I don't know what the fuck this was, but this CGI was dread. Eh, the only CGI I found to be dreadful was the land and water. The land and water creatures, the ones that could go on both land and water. The sharks. The I dinosaurs looked, fine. looked horrible too. I thought the dinosaurs, the T Rex, looked pretty decent. The only thing I liked was the kraken. Yeah, say so the kraken and the sharks. And like, great. how many kraken? Like, how many times can the squid or the kraken get his fucking shit cut off, and he just keeps going? Get the fuck out of here! Once again, you're trying to put logic in a movie where Jason Statham is jet skiing towards the mouth of a Meg with a harpoon while cra like while rock music is blasting in the background. It, it, no, it you just can't. Heather, you can't put logic to these types of movies. I. It's I will give it a two stars, like Rob Humphreys did, because I do agree it didn't try to be something it wasn't. And it's definitely not the worst movie of the year. But um, you said Tim watched it? I'm looking. I don't see his score on here. Yeah, he gave it three stars. Tim Davis? Yeah. yeah he's not showing up on mine. Oh. 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 Ooh, he blocked me from the Wow. Oh. Wow, Tim. Wow. Mm. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, but you are definitely not in the uh, minority on this because, yeah, most of the people I'm following one star, one star, two star, one and a half, two star, two star, half star, two and a half, and then me at three and a half, Matt Wood at three, and then someone, Bigfoot Anon, review gave it a five out of five. Favorite movie of the summer, he says. Aw, well, you know what? I'm glad you had a good time. But my favorite review here is by a guy named Tyler. This is what happens when you order Jurassic World from Wish. <laughs> That's funny. And this That's one, uh, funny. a guy named Joseph, the man, the guy that gave it a half star, the man who made a field in England and Free Fire directed this shit show. The end. <laughs> That's My the point review. exactly. I agree. <laughs> anyway, this is available for rent now. If you liked the first one and you know going into this what it's going to be, rent away. If you really don't like silly movies like Erica, didn't she like fucking go on her phone halfway through this film? And was like, yeah, she out? was. She was over it. Yeah. And I sat there so, watching it just kind of with a big dumb smile like, this is stupid. I love it. So, like, if you have class like Erica, don't watch this film. If you're like Scotty and I and have low standards, and <laughs> watch this film. Because <laughs> I, I kept it going, so I can't judge too much. That's true. You did finish it. I, oh, I finished it all right. Oh, yeah, she finished. Sure did. Oh, no, I didn't. And my arm. Wow. Oh. I know. That's all right, why well. you're so angry at this movie. You didn't finish <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Makes and, so much and, sense now. You know, I'm all about the sexy. Um, the sexy times. <laughs> the sexy times. <laughs> all right, the next one is The Dive, which is basically the whole dive that 2023 has taken. 
Um, the calmer you are, the less air you lose, Scott. Mm. This one was two, I was curious about. It. I have not watched it yet. Uh, well, I watched it. So two sisters go on go diving at a beautiful remote location. One of the sisters is struck by a rock, leaving her trapped 28 meters below. With dangerous low levels of oxygen and cold temperatures, it's up to her sister to fight for her life. Um, Scott. Yes. Did you like? Was it 28 meters below or whatever that was? 48 the, meters. 48 meters below. Yeah, or 47. 47. Yeah, that's what 47. 47. Yeah, we're like, what number is it? 47 meters below. Yeah. Did you like the sequel? Yeah. Would you like to see basically a third installment of the same concept? Sure, why not? Then you'll like this movie. All so right. I um I I started watching this and I was watching it on a good friend's Plex, and it paused and I couldn't get back on, so I rented it for six ninety nine because I really wanted to see the end of it. Oh wow! And, and yes, I did. And um I do not think it's a six ninety nine rental worth. <laughs> Um, it's not a bad survival film, but I find the main lead actors, actors, very annoying. Mm. And if they annoyed me, that says something. I suspect that they will probably annoy you. If you found the actors, like I'm thinking of Daniel from Dummies of Horror. If you found the actors in Fall last year annoying, eh, I would skip this one because you're going to find these two annoying. Good to know. Um, especially the main chick. She's a lot. Um, a good little survival film. If you like these diving, you know, disaster happens. Are they going to make it? What's going to happen? Survival film. You will enjoy it. It's 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 filmed well. It's you know entertaining. I definitely had a good enough time with it. Do I think it was worth six ninety nine? No. Um, but I do think that, you know, it's a, it's a worse version of 47 meters down. It would be like, if it, it would be like if they made a third one, this is what it would probably be. Okay. So it is available on Apple TV, Google play, Amazon, Microsoft, or YouTube. I suggest watching it when it's available on the Plexiplex. Yep. I'll say a couple of our friends have it on their Plex, I believe. Yeah. I would watch it then. All right. Well, then I will definitely check it out. And uh, I guess we can jump on to the last 2023. And oh boy, it's an interesting one to discuss. Uh, so this one is called Haunting of the Queen Mary. Uh, Runtime of 124 minutes. Uh, tagline, Evil Has a New Vessel. When, fo- when photographers Aaron and Patrick are brought aboard the ship with their young son Lucas, they unleash a series of events that entwines their family with the ship's dark past. As the terror unfolds around them, They begin to realize there is more to this sumptuous ocean liner than meets the eye. It's a remarkable legacy masking violent secrets. So Eric and I tried, or not tried, but Eric and I watched this. I think it was Sunday or something like that. Um, And I was really invested Mm. in the beginning because like it was really, Mm -hmm. it was, had a damn good production behind it. It was really well made. Like, the acting was top notch. Uh, the way it was, the way the cameras were shot, the camera angles were really beautiful, and like it was a beautiful setting, and kind of, kind of gave me ghost ship vibes in a bit. Um, and did not expect, but holy hell, some extremely gory moments to the point where they may win some awards for me at the end of the year because some of these, and they were all practical effects as far as I could tell. They looked really freaking good. The downside of this film is the story is so convoluted it jumps so confusing it jumps between timelines so much that it's hard to tell what the hell is going on and what actually is taking place in the present what's taking pat taking what's going on in the past and it just it's just i don't i don't know like it just left me scratching my head the entire time i'm like what the fuck is this i don't understand Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was, I wasn't paying, like, at first I thought I wasn't paying enough attention, but Erica, once again, was just like, nope, done. She just, like, tapped out and started looking at her phone, and I, I was telling you, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure if it was just I needed to pay more attention or something, so you ended up watching it, and your thoughts? Um. <laughs> so, what year did this take place in? I'm still not quite sure that that one. What was the main year? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm not we did sure a lot of we did a lot oh. of time jumping. Um, and I look. like like 
it was like 18 something. No, it was 19 something. Yeah, it was Cause early there was 1900s because like, there was a specific early... actor that was mentioned that was on the ship. And I, I ended up Googling him because I was like, I know that name. I'm trying to look it up. The longer I'm away from this film, the more that I think it was, was I feel like it was um, a collection of ghost stories about this ship. Like, I feel like what they did was they brought in a variety of urban legends over the years that are connected to this ship. This should have been an anthology, maybe? Yeah. And, like, maybe they just focused on each individual story for 15 minutes and then, like, built on maybe how the ghosts from that story haunted the next people instead of making this hodgepodge weird ass movie that left you going so the gore in here was incredible the acting was decent but i'm so fucking confused on what was happening yeah and that's a shame yeah, and i'm trying to look uh but the old timey actor that was on this boat like an actor that was portraying that this old timey actor is fred astaire Yes. So yes. think what I I'm trying to remember like how early he he was around like like one of his first early movies and stuff like that. So, but yeah, this movie was like I say it had me intrigued. I want to I wish I could understand the story because I liked what I saw for the most part. It was just that story kept me just so fucking confused. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what happened, Scott. Yeah, like I say, I just, I don't understand. Like, I, I, why I, didn't they make I, this an anthology and then they little haunting stories? Yeah, maybe we could have our good friend Dave Bailey watch this. Maybe Dave, he could help us. Dave He's Bailey. You know, Heather, I know you didn't understand ends men because of the jacket. Like, I know you were too focused on the jacket, Heather. Right. So, but yeah, I, I don't really, I don't know. I don't recommend this. I thought it was weird as fuck. I don't even know. I don't I'm, even recommend it personally. I recommend people watch it because, like I say, I see good in this. And it makes me wonder if we're just missing something. And I want to know from other people. So I think any of you need, list, yeah, anyone know what happened? Yeah, say, so anyone listening, if you've watched this, can you explain it to us? Or if you do end up watching it, could you explain it to us? Because, yeah, I was confused. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've thought about reading spoilers online. I wonder if there's any. Well, don't Do you... read any spoilers. Well, no. Oh, I won't read it out loud, but I'm wondering if they actually, so what was it called? The Haunting of Queen Mary? Just Yeah, Haunting of Queen Mary. Is there a Wik- Wik- even the Wikipedia probably is like, mm, I don't know. Like, it probably had a breakdown. No, there's not even, right. oh, there is a Wikipedia. Did they write anything? No, they can't even fucking figure it out. <laughs> but it is based off of, so it's supposed to serve as a trilogy. They're going to make more of these films. Oh, Lord. Oh, for fuck's sakes, guys. Oh, I'll be right back. My dog is barking. He needs to go outside. Aw, you let the dog out. Scott oof, did. Scott oof, did. Oof, oof. And but, we'll be back talking about older films. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have an older film, so if you want to just jump right in. Oh, so I just keep going and going. Yeah. All right. Well, finally, really, it's only about me. It should always have been about me and my needs and my thoughts and films anyway. So we're going to talk about my older film and scott will be here to judge me because he's a stinky pants so it'll be great because he'll be going back and listening to this so the film that i watched which was an older film that i'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen before i'm probably just one of the newbies to get to it is a film called rubber so for those of you who don't know rubber was a movie that came out in 2010 <laughs> just talking about rubber Ugh. um and it's about a killer tire and i had always heard of the film and, you know, I, I think when you go into a movie that's about a killer tire, you you know it's going to be stupid, right? Like, it's obviously it's about killer tire. tire. It's not going to be anything that's, you know, incredibly intelligent. So a group of people gather in California desert to watch a film set in the late 90s featuring a homicidal tire, car tire named Robert. <laughs> The assembled crowd of onlookers watches Robert becomes obsessed with the beautiful and mysterious woman and goes on a rampage throughout a desert town. Um, I found this movie very entertaining and very funny. By no stance do I think this movie is anything that I would put as any kind of horror classic. But I will give the individuals who created this props for saying, let's create a movie about nothing. And they even give a nice little speech at the beginning on how there's lots of movies that are about nothing. Mm -hmm. And this movie is about nothing. 
And it's and I give them credit for that. And I'm glad I watched it. Would I rewatch it? Probably not. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh man, it's a go to and definitely something I would watch again. But I had fun with it. I thought it was silly. I thought the tire rolling around and blowing things up <laughs> telepathically was funny. Oh, um hurt I, my thought the, brain. I thought the blow up why? You like fucking dead alive and shit like that. Like, yes, this is, but like I don't know why like I just that. Or, do you like bad taste? Oh, I love bad taste. Yeah, like, why wouldn't you like this, then? It's, like, not that far off. Like, it's also silly and over the top. I, I don't know. Like, I, I think I may have been... The last time I watched this, I may have just been way too high. Because it was, like, ten years ago that I watched it or whatever. So I was just probably way too high. And I just sat there going, what? <laughs> you were like, is that my tire? <laughs> what happened? Why? why? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh. Like, I, I felt my brain cells disappearing. I honestly... I I... I'm glad I watched it because I felt like it was one of those, you know, it came out, it was about this killer tire, you know, might as well check it out. It was entertaining enough for what it was. I think if you haven't watched it and you walk into it knowing that it's about a killer tire and it's going to be silly, then it's worth your time. If not, skip it. Like, obviously, it's not something that you need to watch as a horror fan. Right. Um, but I had fun with it. It was it was fluffy. And since I talked here, why don't you talk about what's new for you? And then um, I'll talk about my thing. All right. So, yeah, uh, we decided to bring something to the table for what's new. And I actually brought a I know a good old Luffy from Dummies of Horror will be happy to hear about these two things because he's my fellow gaming buddy. But, uh, yep, Baldur's Gate 3 came out finally out of early access. And my D&D heart nerd heart exploded with happiness because this game is like I've barely even scratched the surface of it, but it's just a massive. It's basically like playing D and D, but in video game form. Like it, you literally have anything, almost anything you can think of trying to do. The game has a way to either let you do it or has you fail doing it. Like there are, like the game anticipates a lot of what you're trying to do. Like and with the uh, the world of D and D and the freedom that D and D gives you, and then the fact that a video game can closely resemble that. Is pretty fucking impressive, especially for a smaller into smaller studio such as Larian Studios who made this. And the thing that makes me so damn happy, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring it up, is it has been getting nothing but pure love and joy from the gaming community. Even people who don't play these old school style RPGs are jumping into this game and loving it. Uh, almost, like, I think it's got, like, a 96 or 97 on Metacritic right now, which is, like, the conglomerate of all video game review scores for this game. And it's, like, that's the highest percent of, like, almost 100 reviews. It's, like, a 96 or 97 percent high. And it is doing so well that, yeah, like, people are, like, talking. And it's made video game, big AAA video game developers come out and start saying, all right, people, we understand what Larian Studios did, but do not expect, uh, do not hold us to this standard going forward, blah, blah, blah. It's like, as a video game consumer, my words to you AAA developers is, fuck you. Yes, we will hold you to this standard going forward. If, if a smaller development team can make this amazing game and not send out something that is broken or send out something that's charging us money for these little tiny things that we can buy in game, and they actually give us a well-polished, well-meaning story with a lot of depth and customization, then yes, us as consumers should hold you AAA developers accountable for the crap that you rush out and charge us for. But, all right, getting off my high horse there for a second, but I just wanted to give love to Larian Studios because Baldur's Gate 3, I've already made six different characters recreating my old D&D characters when I used to play D&D with my friends. Um... Barely even made it a couple hours into each game, but I'm just, like, having fun creating the characters, starting this world, and starting all these different things. Um, but I'll jump onto the one that is definitely more on the horror theme of video games, and that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game. And we saw this advertised on AEW, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, this is, what do they call them, an asymmetrical horror film, or horror game uh, with seven people so it's an online game only four people play as victims but if you don't have any online friends to play with you you play with strangers which is what i do because i don't play oh with yay and i just turn my mic off so i don't have to talk to anybody <laughs> but uh yeah four people play as the victims that are trying to escape 
and three people play as one of the members of the crazy chainsaw family. So you got Bubba, you know, good old Leatherface himself. You got uh, the cook, uh, and you have uh, the crazy hitchhiker. You have, like, I'm thinking these must be two new additions, because I'm trying to remember through the crazy Texas Chainsaw lore where these characters came from, but I don't remember, but there was a female character. Is Matthew McConaughey in it? Nope. But that's what I'm waiting for, because this is from the company that did the Friday the 13th game back in the day that did a wonderful recreation of the sets and stuff like that, and they brought out other skins and characters from the franchise. So I'm hoping that, you know, this does well enough that Gun Media brings in uh, Bill Mosley's crop top from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, brings in, like, Matthew McConaughey's likeness and a couple other characters and maybe bring in Stretch from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 as one of the surviving victims. But, yeah, they did a great job of recreating the gas station, the farmhouse, all of this. The controls, it controls wonderfully. Um, and very, uh, it feels very authentic to, like, how you would escape these madmen. And, like, it's just very Does anyone fun. dislocate their elbow or hurt their ankles having a shower? Uh, no, but if you get stabbed uh-huh. a lot by the uh, hitchhiker as he's slicing you, like, you start to bleed out. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and good old Bubba is, you know, Leatherface coming uh, up, revving your chainsaw, and you can slice him and dice him. And... Oh, I like when someone revs my chainsaw. <laughs> I'm sure they sure you do. But, yeah, like, this game is very simple. There's not a lot to it. It's, like, very repetitive because it's, you know, the same thing over and over again. But it is just the interaction, the scares. Because I was playing one night with the boys watching me. And I got made fun of because I'm just peeking my head around a corner as one of the victims. Then all of a sudden, here comes Leatherface. Chainsaw run. I'm going, oh, Jesus Christ. I dropped my controller. I, like, I freaked out because it was literally just, like, one of those jump scare moments. Like, it, like I got into it, and I was getting made fun of by the boys. And they're going, you got scared. I'm like, I kissed my ass. That got me good. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to chase you, but I have a bad ankle and knee. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, no, I had such a blast for this. I'm not doing this game justice as reviewing it. Same with Baldur's Gate 3. But just, I'm having a blast with both these games. One is for, like, you know, oh, I don't have a lot of time. I'll jump into a match real quick and play a Texas Chainsaw Massacre or oh, I got a few hours to kill? Okay, I'll jump into Baldur's Gate and get lost in this wonderfully built and crafted story in the fantasy world. But uh, be, I am a P, I am on a PC, so I'm playing these both on my gaming laptop. And yeah, beautiful games, so much fun. And this is the year of video games because these games are, I'm, I'm just happy. I have barely played any video games in the last year and a half. And this is, these two games have brought me back into Oh man, home. a long time that you move in with a woman, you end up being good video games being dropped, I know, right? Huh? <laughs> How like, fucking ironic is that? Um, <laughs> does Erica play these games with you or do you guys play other games? <laughs> well, she's a, uh, she's a total Final Fantasy nerd. So she uh, uh, plays she's a uh, Final nerd, Fantasy. She? she is. That's why I love this woman. She's Let's just get like her me. nerding out together. It's true. Yeah, I'll say, because it was great. One night she was playing Final Fantasy on the big screen, and I had Texas Chainsaw Massacre on my laptop just sitting next to her and playing on that. So it was great. The same. I like it when I go to friends' houses and one of us playing with the Ouija board, another one sacrificing virgins <sighs> in the corner. It's nice. It's oh, nice, oh, you know? Yeah. And, oh, you're just jealous that you didn't get to come to that one. That's all. You're just a little I, I'm upset. I'm just jealous I didn't get to come. <laughs> <laughs> It's good, Scott. That's funny. Oh man, good for you. Thanks. <laughs> so I went on another ghost tour, um, and this one was funny. So you would have got a kick out of this one, Scott. So I went up to a place called Baden, Ontario, which is about an hour and a half drive. Oh no, it's about an hour drive. And I went to an old hotel. Well, old for Ontario, so 1874. I uh, had some dinner and some some drinks. It was great. And then I did this ghost tour. Of course, my elbow's all fucking slinged up because I don't want anyone to come near me, right? So I, <laughs> right. I'm like walking wounded, right? So the, the tour was at a place called Castle Kilbride, which was, you know, it's not really a castle. <laughs> it's just a big mansion um, that, you know, was built from someone that came over from Scotland who had a lot of money that made it look like a little mini castle. So you can't take pictures in this place. So I have no pictures to show because I guess the painting on the walls and the wallpaper is original and they don't want the flash to deteriorate the original paint 
Okay. So they don't allow you to take pain, painter, pictures, and they do have security cameras set up because everything in there is like original, like the original furniture and stuff. So it's all super expensive, right? So we go on this this ghost tour, and the rooms are beautiful. The house is is breathtakingly gorgeous, and we're on the first floor. And I'm going room to room, and all I hear is beep beep boop boop beep 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 nee, nee. and I'm like, what the fuck? Well, it must be one of the security cameras are going off or whatever, right? And then it would stop and the tour guide would kind of like, you know, do their thing, tell stories or whatever. We go up to the second floor and that's where all the bedrooms are. So the tour guides, you know, doing his thing and gives us a little like time to wander around and wander around to the bedrooms. And all I hear is beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, 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 beep. I'm like, what the fuck? And I look over and this guy is two of those paranormal detectors. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he did, Scotty. And, like, he's holding it up, and, like, he puts it up, and it's like, it's, like, getting louder and more intense. And he's like, oh, man, the reading. So, of course, like, other people on the tour are like, oh, what's that? He's like, well, you know, the readings are crazy over here. There must be a lot of activity of spirits, right? So the the um, the the tour guide starts telling the story about the little girl's room, and he's like, you know, a lot of people don't like to go in the little girl's room. They say it's haunted. Her doll is here, and it's covered by a a glass thing. You know, did you ever see the documentary on Robert the doll? Yeah. Right. So I was like, you know, Heather, this is your time. Things haven't been going well for you recently. Um, you're kind of a sad panda. It's time to just stir the pot a little bit, right? So he's talking about this doll in this in this case. So he's like, anyone have any questions? Of course, I put up my hand. And I'm like, I'm just wondering, is there anything that's ever happened with the doll? Like, perhaps you're familiar with the documentary, Robert the Doll. <laughs> and the unfortunate things that happen around Robert. And he's like, oh, well, no, I think the doll's just in the case. Well, fucking ghost guy took that as a fucking sign. Goes running into the room with his fucking beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. And that shit goes off, Scott. It's like, me, beep, beep, boop, boop, nee, me, me, beep, boop, boop. Like, all the fucking sounds, all the bells and whistles. So much so that the poor tour guide had to, like, eventually last zoo us to get the fuck out of that area. He's like, all right, guys, can we please move on? And ghost tour guy's just like... Oh no! The and then like I guess one of the cabinets opened on its own in her room, and they all lost their fucking shit, Scott. Like it went nuts. Oh, that is great. <laughs> so anyway, we go up to the top and we're in the attic space, which is quite large because it's also a museum, right? And they had these games you can play, and one of them's called Skittles, and it's a it's a spinny top game. So basically, you spin this little top, and it has to hit down these pegs and ring the bell. And I can't really play it because my one arm's bandaged and I'm trying to like wrap it up and like George is off doing his thing. So I'm kind of on my own. And this really nice man comes over and he's like, would you need, do you need some help? I'm like, yeah, like, I don't know how this game works. He's like, oh, I've played it before. I'll show you. So he, he like wraps a string around, puts it in, he spins it. And like, we watch it go around. And of course he hits down all the pegs. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. He's like, yeah, it's probably the coolest thing and realest thing that's happened on this tour, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And we, oh, we wow. had a good laugh. Um, so Boop Boop Beep Beep guy um, stayed afterwards to talk to the staff about all his findings with his ghost detector um, oh, equipment. And, you know, like, who am, you know, I believe in ghosts. You know, I yeah. actually do believe in that. But I, I couldn't get over the Beep Beep Boop Boop and the E. And, like, I felt like I was in an episode of Grave Encounters. Like, I'm like, where's the fucking, like, is this Grave Encounters 3? Is this? Am I in a filming right now for this? Like it was We're just paranormal so... investigators. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was just so over the top. So I have booked two more ghost tours because I have to be in Toronto in a couple of weeks for work. And one of them's on a pirate ship. Ooh. So the pirate ship will be taking us out, and for those of us who are familiar with Toronto, into the Toronto Harbor, out to the Toronto Islands, and we're going to hear some shipwreck stories and some other ghost stories on the uh, on the sea. And and yes, have I prepaid for alcohol? You better fucking believe I have. Heather, prepaid for alcohol? No. I absolutely have, my friend. I absolutely. I have. hope you run into a ghost and be like, "Yar." Me name's a dread pirate, Robert. And I am here <laughs> to plumble your booty. I'm gonna be like beep beep boop boop beep beep boop boop my little 
Be here to blunder your booty, ma'am, and get on this ship. Honestly. So, yeah, it was the ghost. And you know what? If we had paranormal investigators listening to this podcast, I am not making fun of you. I, I am. unlike Scott, well, Scott, <laughs> I just thought this guy was kind of a little bit over the top. And I don't know if it was the most appropriate venue to be doing this. Like, no, I think. Yeah, like I think if you're going to do that, you should be going in with other paranormal investigators, and that should be the thing you're doing because not everyone wanted to hear his machine go off or the right. Well, and it's a distraction from the tour guide, distracting yeah. the tourists that are on the yeah. tour. It's just right. disrespectful. And like you go on these ghost tours, they're they're generally speaking storytelling, right? Yeah. It's storytelling, and it was again. I do think there's value in paranormal hunting. But I don't think that was the right venue for it. So, but beep, beep, boop, boop, um, I guess felt that he, this was his time to shine. So um, that was my exciting. (laughs) And a listener of the show, Mark Cooper, who I understand you talked to before. Yes. Yeah. Mark Cooper is really cool. Look at, look at that, Mark. Did you hear that? Scott thinks you're cool. That's all you need, actually. You're a cool motherfucker, Mark. But he has tattoos and stuff. He's very badass looking compared oh, to Oh, much me. better, much better than me because I'm freaking. I'm a blank I know, slate. I know. Like he looks like he could fuck someone up. We would look like we would get fucked up. <laughs> we would get fucked up and do fucked up shit. So he sent me a trailer for right now for Goldilocks and the Three Bears: Death and Porridge. Oh, Have Jesus you heard Christ. of this? I'm no. To you. Right now, we don't have to talk about it right now, but I feel as though we will be at a loss if we don't watch the... It looks as good as Blood and Honey. Oh, boy. I'm just going to set it up on the YouTube, not volume on. Um, I sent it to your messenger. Yeah. You know her... Oh, the trailer. I know her. You know her name. You know the consequences. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Let's see here. Skip ad. Let's get to this. Oh, my God. How many ads do you have to play beforehand? Oh, it looks like the same guys that made Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I was going to say, like, oh, I got, I'm, I'm lucky because I have uh, YouTube Red, so I don't have, or whatever, premium, so I don't have ads in front of mine. Oh, look at you. This is definitely the same people that made Winnie the Pooh. I can tell with how it's filmed. They're in some random house. It must be like an Airbnb. Uh-oh, there's Goldilocks. Oh, no, she's drugging their porridge. Oh, no, there's... Oh, my God. Um, These fucking costumes. Um, oh, yeah. Is this like a, a fake porridge. trailer or is this real? This looks like the same one of the people that made Winnie the Pooh. Uh, is it not? Kinda. It looks... Oh, dude, this looks just like Winnie the Pooh. I'm just... I, I'm just... No, it literally is Winnie the Pooh. No, because that's... For a second. I don't know. I'm not sure if I buy this to be a real movie. Let's see. Okay, let's see if it is. Death and Porridge. Coming soon. Let's see here. Death and uh, Porridge 2023. This is going to be the greatest mystery. Thank you, Mark, for giving this. Oh, it's on IMDb. It's, I, it's on IMDb. I'll be damned. It is directed by Craig Reese. Let's see if he did fucking... Craig Reese, what else have you done? Sculptures, Violence, Whispers, Annabellum, Lake Alice. Oh, he's done a lot of shitty movies. Good. Um, oh, we're in for oh, a treat then. Oh, yeah, he is. He's doing this. He's doing this, baby. Oh, boy. I, I oh, gotta watch. Fuck it yeah. Thank you, Mark Cooper, for sending us this. This is fabulous. We yeah. We thank you greatly. Um, maybe we'll bring you on, Mark. You can do a review. Mark's terrified. He probably doesn't want to do that. But Scott and I will review it on your behalf. Maybe we'll bring yeah. Erica on. That looks like a movie Erica's going to love. No, that, 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 no, I don't know if I can put her through that. She's going to be like, and I'm leaving you. I, yep. cannot, I cannot handle this anymore. Um, man, I love it. I love that they're just ripping off shit now, oh. making cheap camping versions of these movies. 2023 and 2024 is going to be the year of copyrighted stuff going into public domain. Hey man, Winnie the Pooh, Bud and Honey is my top is in my top ten. Not in my top ten, but it was a fun movie. I fucking love that film. I I want to make babies with it. I want to make little oh Winnie the Pooh babies with it. Winnie the Honey babies with it because it was so fucking great. So <laughs> Scotty and I will be back again for a couple more episodes before my next trip to the UK. Oh Jesus Christ! Just uh, also where Winnie the Pooh was filmed and all. Of Holy Lost Movie was hell. Scott has walked away from the keyboard. 
which is too bad because as you guys heard earlier, Scott's keyboard's broken. So I don't actually know when he's going to edit this. He may never edit these shows. This may just go into like, I was just saying your keyboard's broken and I don't know when people are actually going to hear this show five years from now. I don't well, know. Like I say, we're going to, I'm going to experiment. Um, if I have to, I'll transfer it over to the laptop. If I can figure out a way to do all this stuff and get everything uploaded on there and try from there. But uh, I also wanted to say that I plan on, because by now I would like to get this episode and the episode we recorded before this out almost consecutively, like one a week later, just to kind of get everybody caught up with us. Cause you know, yeah. now, cause we are kind of a bit behind when our episode releases, mm -hmm. cause the last episode came out like a month after we recorded. Type Soon things. we'll be talking about the boys and they'll be like married with kids. Exactly. <laughs> we'll be releasing the episode where they're still in high school. So I want to um, I want to release, try to release them week to week at some point and then get back to a two week release after that. Because at Friday Nightmares here, we're very professional and we, uh, we Absolutely. never storm off because someone mentions their trip to the UK. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when you walked away that was really funny but i kept talking i'm like if i did that to you you'd be like oh no but i'm like oh well bye scotty <laughs> um so we will take the reason why i bring that up is because we will take a little bit of a break maybe um i don't know i don't know if we yeah, will we'll or see. not we'll see i might watch it so it won't matter or scott might watch a bunch of shit and we'll just talk about what he watches it's really right fun. we'll figure it out we'll figure it out so Thank you, as always, for listening. Um, we really do appreciate it. it. If you have not joined the Legion Patreon yet, uh, please do. We are proud members of the Legion Patreon or the Legion podcast or the Legion. What is it? The Legion Network. Thank yeah. you. I'm like, oh, the, the, the Legion, the, the podcast, the network. The Legion <laughs> <network>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we are. I just want to be in the Goldilocks movie. Um, and anyway, you can join Patreon and there is lots of great stuff you can do on Patreon. Uh, you can listen to episodes early for other shows as well as you get a variety of codes. And, um, usually Scott asks a question here, but I'm not sure if he's going to take off his earphones again in protest, but I, I mean, guys, what are you waiting for? <laughs> what the fuck are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> that's got cried about 2023 movies it won't end <laughs> hey talk to me was great you need to go watch that i want to see that so eventually. you should it's good and the last voyage of the demeter that's actually rob's origin stories that's what how, that's rob when he came ah, over Ah, it makes so much sense <laughs> I don't like these movies. I don't like this space. <laughs> be nice to my old bones. <laughs> oh, I'll be nice to his old bone, all right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but yes, we will be back again soon. Scott's going to double bang these episodes out like it's bang, uh, bang. the one night stand. And uh, you'll probably hear from us a couple more times before uh, before I go away. Hopefully, at least one more time before I go away. And uh, yeah, and we look forward to bringing you more of the joy that 2023 has to offer. I got to watch the Boogeyman. I'm excited yep. to talk about that. Yep, I want to check that out. The Last Voyage of the Demeter is on Plex. I'll be watching that at some point. Slother House is out now, so I want to see that. Slother House sounds very cute. Yeah, it looks ridiculous, and I'm so on board. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be yeah. awesome. All right, well, do you have anything else to say to the good people, Scotty? Well, until next time, kitties, just remember, it is now spoopy season, so buy your pumpkin spice lattes, your pumpkin beers, your ciders, your pumpkins, whatever the fuck you want, and shove them directly up your ass, because it's <laughs> spoopy season, bitches, and we go get totally spoopy. In fact, I'm going to buy a pumpkin and fuck it right now. <laughs> Erica's like, oh, I was looking forward to a weekend together, but I guess you and the pumpkin can have it's the bedroom. It's spoopy season! <laughs> <laughs> and join us for our commentary on Halloween Ends, where Scott and I get a beat down <laughs> with all the other podcasters. Uh, I can't wait. Hashtag blessed. But, but yes, until next time, everybody. Unpleasant dreams. See ya. <laughs>